Are you ready? Good morning. Welcome to our commencement. It is my honor and a privilege to be here with you today. This is the first of eight separate ceremonies for our class of 2018, with a total of 6,784 graduates. Everyone is very, very special. Today, our focus is on 80 very special graduates of our College of Creative Studies. This college was created for especially gifted students like yourself, full of intellectual curiosity and independent-minded in your own way. Your parents can attest to that. <laughs> this year, our campus has a total of 233 regions, region scholars. CCS has 49. So with less than 2% of the campus student population, CCS has more than 20% of region scholars. 13 of you are graduating with honors. 16 earned high honors. 17 earned highest honors. And more than three quarter of you have plans to go on to graduate schools. So CCS is like a graduate school for undergraduates. I would like to thank our outstanding faculty here and our extraordinary staff and our devoted alumni and friends. I would like to especially recognize Dean Foltz, Kathy Foltz, for your totally dedicated <laughs> outstanding leadership. <laughs> they, they love you so much, they clap even before I say something about you. <laughs> Uh, I want to acknowledge you for your dedicated, total dedication and outstanding leadership. You work six days a week with long hours in the office, taking good care of our students. And yet, each Sunday, you were working in your research laboratory. Kathy, thank you. Let's give her another round of applause. I will especially like to thank our parents and the family members. You have steadfast in our students' lives, providing love, support, and encouragement. We would like to give all of you our heartfelt applause. Thank you. <laughs> now to our graduates, congratulations. During your time here, you have demonstrated to all of us just how special you are. We have come to appreciate your curiosity, your devotion, your imagination, and your accomplishment. And of course, you have had a good time, did you? I have happy memories of the class of 2018. I vividly remember when my wife, Dylan, and I and our CCS faculty and the deans went on a regional reception tour to recruit some of you around the state and to the East Coast. And I remember the excitement of a freshman move-in weekend. It all seems just like yesterday. Uh, parents and family members, I know how you must be feeling. Very proud, very happy, and perhaps a little bit relieved. <laughs> we have seen how hard our students have worked some of you have worked part-time. Some of you have pursued a double majors. You have undertaken original research and a creative projects. You have volunteered your time to help others. You have contributed to the life of our campus and our community in countless ways. This campus is a place of int great intel intellectual vitality as well as spectacular natural beauty. I know that you graduates would take up take with you wonderful memories of this place and at this time. There's one thing I wanted to always you to remember, and that is how you helped to make our campus a better place. For that, I say thank you. Talking about a great, better place, let me take a moment to mention some of UC Santa Barbara's accomplishments and recognitions. We are one of only, one of only 62 members of the prestigious over a century old association of American universities. This distinction places UC Santa Barbara among the top 2% of all universities in the United States and Canada. This, this year, in its ranking of 1,527 national universities, UC US News, US News ranks UC Santa Barbara number eight 
among all public universities in the country. Also this year, Times Higher Education of London ranked the top universities around the world for producing Nobel laureates in this century, in the century. UC Santa Barbara ranks number nine. This number nine ranking is about our faculty. What about our graduates? Well, in 2009, our campus was excited to celebrate our very first CCS alumna Nobel laureate, Carol Greider. This is a testament to the caliber of undergraduate education and the environment at UC Santa Barbara. Maybe we have some more future Nobel laureates among our graduate class here today. Times Higher Education of London published another study this year ranking the top international powerhouse universities based on citations of our publications. UC Santa Barbara is ranked the number three in the world. Our long history of uh, academic excellence is complemented by our unwavering commitment to diversity. The New York Times has published a college access index, ranking all the top colleges doing the most for the American dream based on a commitment to economic diversity. UC Santa Barbara is ranked the number two in the country. None of this accomplishment would be possible without the dedication of our outstanding faculty and the staff. I also want to acknowledge the hard work and the sacrifice of our students and the family members. I know what it took to get you where you are today. Congratulations. So today I would like to say to our graduates, we are here to honor your accomplishments and to celebrate your hard earned degrees. You have met the high standards of our university. I can tell you with confidence that starting today and for the rest of your lives, you will always be proud to say you are a graduate of UC Santa Barbara. Congratulations. So it is my honor now to turn the podium back to Dean Kathy Foltz. Thank you, Chancellor Yang. I want to express my sincere appreciation on behalf of the entire college to Chancellor Yang and his wife, Dilling, who's here in the audience today for their untiring and extraordinary efforts uh, and for epitomizing the spirit of our campus and our community here. So thank you, Chancellor, and thank you, Dilling. It's now my pleasure to introduce members of the administration and faculty who do so much to make this university and the college the thriving and exciting place, uh, places that they are. I'd ask that you please hold your applause until the end. And if I miss anyone on the list, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. So we have with us today uh, Professor Leroy Laborman here in, the, in uh, CCS in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. He's also the Associate Dean of uh, the College of Creative Studies. We have Executive Vice Chancellor David Marshall and, of course, Chancellor Lang here on the podium and our, and our speaker, Dana Staff, at the end. In the audience, we have Ophelia Aguiar, the director of the Center for Science and Engineering Partnerships, Bill Ashby, former CCS provost, 1993 to 2006, Maribel Bueno Cachadinha, CCS Math and LNS Department of Math, Carl Castile, CCS Math, LNS Department of Math, Pete Capello, computer science and former CCS uh, computing, emeritus, I believe, is that accurate? Welcome back. Irene Chen, Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, Phil Conrad, CCS Computing, College of Engineering, Computer Science, Linda Ekstrom, CCS Art, Stu Feinstein, CCS Biology and Molecular Cell and Developmental Biology, and the, Associate, uh, the Assistant Director of the Neuroscience Research Institute, Jay Freeman, Computing, uh, Songi Han, Department of Chemistry, Jeremy Haladanya, CCS Music Composition and LNS Department of Music, Maria Herrera Sobek, Associate Vice Chancellor for Diversity and Equity in Academic Policy. Leslie Hogan, CCS Music Composition. Armin Kuris, CCS Biology and Ecology Evolution and Marine Biology Department. John Lato, CCS Biology, Ecology Evolution and Marine Biology. John Longbreak, the AVC for Public Affairs and Communication. 
David Lowe, CCS Biology and Molecular Cell and Developmental Biology and Biomolecular Science and Engineering. Jane Malfinger, CCS Art and LNS Department of Art. Chris Palmstrom, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering and the Materials Department. Hank Pitcher, CCS Art. Scott Price, Lecturer in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Harry Reese, CCS Art, LNS Department of Art. Sonny Samuel, CCS Art. Thomas Sedaris, Department of Mathematics. Jeffrey Stoppel, Associate Vice Chancellor of Undergraduate Education. Bruce Tiffany, CCS Biology, LNS Department of Earth Science and the former Dean of CCS 2006 to 2016. Claudia Tyler, CCS Biology. Dave Valentine, Earth Science and CCS Biology. And potentially a new major in CCS, Marine Sciences, which we hope to launch in the very near future. Richard Wang, CCS Computing, College of Engineering, Computer Science. And I think that's everyone on my list. If I missed everyone, my personal apologies. But let's give a round of applause to our faculty. We all know, administrators and faculty alike, that the people who really make things work are the staff, and the CCS is blessed with a small but dynamic, te dynamic team deserving of the very highest praise. They're with us here today down in the front. We have Frank Bauman, Lynn Clark, Vanille Geronimo, Jen Johansson, Marianne Morris, Megan Peterson, Will Proctor, Sarah Strafone, and Emma Shapiro. I know the students know who really knows what's going on in CCS. Let's give them a round of applause. And finally, on behalf of today's graduates, I want to thank all of the CCS parents and CCS donors for their support and generosity over this year. This has been our 50th anniversary year. We've had a lot of events, and we really appreciate the engagement that we've had with current families and past families. And I want to extend my thanks to everyone who just stays in touch with CCS, and we hope that you do that with us. In the current day, your collective support is invaluable in permitting these extraordinary students to realize their potential, so thank you. It's been my true privilege to serve as the interim dean of CCS these past two years, and especially this year as we celebrated our 50th anniversary. I'm just so happy to be able to celebrate with the class of 2018. You guys are awesome, and I, you know, I'm glad to be able to send you on your way, but I'm really going to miss you. And I have the additional honor of saying just a few brief words, and I'm purposefully going to turn away from the audience a bit because I want to talk to this group here on the stage. I'm not really very good at giving advice. And I'm not going to do that, but instead I have some wishes for you. I wish for each of you individually and collectively, and as a dean and a professor, but also as a parent, here's my wishes, maybe they're hopes, Maybe they're the same thing, maybe they're advice, I don't know. You can take it however you want. Anyway, here they are. I hope that you find a career that does not feel like work and does not harm other people or the planet. I hope that you continue to be curious, radically so, and that you continue to wonder and maybe wander and to question and to grow. I hope that in the process, you remain fearless and are not afraid to go outside of your comfort zone and to try new things. And I especially hope that you're not afraid of failing. I hope that you fight against ignorance. I hope that no matter what you do, you retain your core character and morals and that you do not sacrifice that for ambition. I hope that each of you defines success for yourself instead of letting others do it for you. And finally, I hope that you participate in our democracy. I have a lot more wishes for you, but those are the main ones. You've taught me much. In fact, this year I learned a new word from you. And that word is sonder, S-O-N-D-E-R. Yeah, you can Google it, and I see some of you are probably already pulling out your phones, yeah. It means that when you engage with a person, you try to remember that they've arrived at this spot through their own personal journey, and you don't know exactly what that journey has been, but you have to respect it, and you have to think about what their story is and how it might affect yours. And in other words, don't be too quick to judge. 
Sonder is a way of being. So thanks for that word, for sonder. I'll always remember it. And thank you for letting us be part of your story, UCSB. At commencement, deans often say that we're kicking you out of the nest. In my experience, CCS students have never been in the nest to begin with. CCS is a branch you landed on for a short time, and we're really happy you did it. So now go fly. Congratulations, and thank you. Thank you. So each year, in our tradition, the college invites a distinguished alumnus to address the graduating class. And this year, I have the honor and very real pleasure of welcoming back Dr. Dana's staff. Dana is a freelance writer and science communicator with internationally recognized expertise in cephalopods. That's squid, octopus, cuttlefish, and all their really cool relatives. She fell in love with these animals at age 10 and began keeping them as pets in a home aquarium. And as an undergraduate in the College of Creative Studies, where she earned her degree in 2004 in CCS biology, she focused her first independent research project on the biology of the little known California Lilliput octopus. She also started her science blog, The Cephalopodiatrist. Both research and writing continued at Stanford University's Hopkins Marine Station, where staff completed a dissertation on reproduction and early life of the Humboldt squid, and created the Squid A Day blog still featured on Science 2.0. Dr. Staff now contributes news articles to outlets such as Science, KQED, and Gizmodo, and her short fiction and essays have appeared in various anthologies. Her first book, Squid Empire, the Rise and Fall of the Cephalopods, great reading, was named one of the best science books of 2017 by NPR, and she's been on book tours uh, for the last year. She also created several science outreach programs, including the popular biology program Squids for Kids, and she's spoken at museums, aquariums, Google, public libraries, universities, and schools at every grade level. She lives in San Jose with her husband, and as she puts it, an unruly collection of kids, cats, and plants, and dreams of someday reviving her old saltwater aquarium. Please welcome Dr. Dana Staff. Hello. Thank you very, very much for having me. Can you all see the squid? <laughs> I couldn't actually decide whether to wear this hat today, so like any good millennial, I conducted a poll on social media. The response was divided. 9% yes, 44% heck yes, and 47% why are you even asking? <laughs> of course, I wrote the poll, so those were the only answer choices. <laughs> it is such a joy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Dean Foltz. Thank you, everyone else, for tolerating my presence. As Kathy may recall, but was kind enough not to mention, this is my second CCS commencement speech. I was one of the student speakers in 2004. I know Armand remembers. My entire speech consisted of a tortuous analogy between our graduating class and a group of worms that parasitize octopus kidneys. <laughs> I was surprised to be invited back. <laughs> and it's certainly a bit intimidating to stand here knowing that past year's speakers have included such luminaries as Nobel laureate Carol Greider. I don't have a Nobel Prize. By some standards, I don't even have a job. <laughs> but my circuitous path so far has taught me a lot about working and living, and I have gleaned some useful information, perhaps we'll call it advice, um, that I hope will serve all of you, whether or not you go on to win a Nobel Prize or get a real job. 
going back a little bit in time, like many of you, I'm sure, I was the kind of child that adults described as creative, the way you might use interesting when you don't have anything else to say. <laughs> like this, wow, look at your outfit. You're wearing a blue tie-dyed shirt and green camo print pants, and are those fish on your socks? Oh, just one sock, and the other one has leopard spots. How creative. Or this, wow, the class assignment was not to build a cardboard octopus postal worker carrying a bag full of tiny handwritten letters from the Greek warriors at Troy. But that's really creative. <laughs> so when I found out that I could get a college degree in creative studies, sign me up. <laughs> the first gift that CCS gave me was the opportunity to take upper division invertebrate zoology as a freshman alongside the required introductory biology series. Many biologists here may have done similar things. I remember sitting right in the front of the invertebrate class and taking notes until my hand cramped and I earned an A plus. And at the very same time, I sat way in the back of the intro bio lectures and drew comics in my notebook and got a C minus. <laughs> thus demonstrating anew the age old platitude that you get out of your education only what you put into it. In this case, I got my first self-published comic book titled, Hey Baby, What's Your Genome? <laughs> Thanks to the CCS building where you could print and distribute comic books. Um, and a broad knowledge of the world's most obscure animals from the invertebrate class, including those octopus kidney worms. And I wasn't going to do it, but I have to tell you more about them because you all want to know, right? They're called diceamids, and they're extremely focused, like CCS students, with each species parasitizing its own distinct set of octopus species. Within each octopus, they live exclusively in the kidneys, where they proliferate before emerging into the open ocean on a water slide of octopus urine. <laughs> nobody knows what they do next, nobody knows whether they infect other types of animals, and nobody knows how they find new octopus hosts. The rest of their life cycle is a total mystery, which was the punchline of my first speech. We're all diceamid worms, having lived for four years in the rich environment of CCS. Uh, see, it's less of a nest and more of an octopus kidney. Uh, bathed in octopus pee, and at graduation, we're released into the environment to complete our mysterious unknown life cycles. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> but this is my second speech. So I've improved it a little bit. Uh, for me, when I graduated, and many of my fellow worms, and many of these wonderful worms on the stage today, the next step in the life cycle is graduate school. And I remember during my application process, I had to pitch some original research projects to potential advisors and funding agencies. So obviously, I told them I would figure out the life cycle of diceamid parasites. Spoiler, I didn't. So that is still a wide open question if anyone's at a loss for obscure research projects. Just keep it in mind. Um, I did, however, get into grad school and I moved up the coast to get my PhD at Stanford's Hopkins Marine Station in Monterey. Now I have to say something about that line that CCS calls itself graduate school for undergraduates. Because CCS is awesome and grad school might not be. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because Monterey is about 20 degrees colder than Santa Barbara and perpetually foggy. Of course, coming from CCS, you have the tremendous advantage of lots of experience designing your own work from scratch. But it can still be daunting to conceive a graduate project ambitious enough to capture the interest of your thesis committee and then actually complete it in a finite number of years. It's possible, not guaranteed, but possible to wind up trapped in your own head, certain that everyone, especially your thesis advisor, sees and judges your every mistake. During one of these low points that I experienced, a friend of mine, who also happens to be a CCS biology grad, told me, Dana, your advisor doesn't even know your name. <laughs> Which was technically not true, but the point was valid. Nobody, including my advisor, thought about me nearly as much as I thought about me. It was a moment of incredible clarity and freedom. The crushing pressure to produce a world-class dissertation, or indeed any kind of coherent dissertation at all, was mostly coming from me. Nobody else cared. 
or at least they didn't care as much. And this is about as close to nihilism as I've ever gotten. By embracing it, I ended up with a reasonably coherent dissertation, plus the confidence to decide that the academic life wasn't for me. So I didn't even look for postdoctoral research positions. I put on one fish sock and one leopard print sock and declared myself a freelance writer. I had always been a writer ever since I learned how to write. See Exhibit A, a bag full of tiny handwritten letters from the Greek warriors at Troy. But even so, when I decided to make it my actual job, I felt like a poser. After all, I had two degrees in biology and zero in English. However, my college roommate and a bunch of our friends were CCS literature students, so I had a casual baptism in archaic poetry forms and post-post-postmodern criticism. And although I was too lazy to double major, I did take loads of CCS literature classes. It's another one of the great gifts of this community that it welcomes such intellectual cross-pollination. See what I did there? That is a biology metaphor. <laughs> the other reason that I felt like a poser was that I didn't spend most of my time writing, not even close, because I had reached the reproductive phase of my life cycle, and for four years, I was the primary caretaker of our family. But a creative approach to work-life balance can accomplish wonders. I wrote this book during that phase. And I once interviewed a paleontologist for my book while we were both breastfeeding. <laughs> so eventually, my husband wanted in on the stay-at-home parenting, not on the breastfeeding. So he quit his job. Now we're both self-employed, and we split parental care. It's not exactly, what's the word, easy, but work and life can be surprisingly compatible. Fielding my five-year-old's questions is a great way to make sure that I understand a topic well enough to write about it. When I was a kid, I told people I wanted to be a marine biologist or an author. As creative as I was, I don't think I ever considered inventing my own career as a part-time journalist, part-time novelist, cartoonist, and public speaker, and stay-at-home parent who still occasionally publishes in a peer-reviewed journal. But here I am, and it's awesome. <laughs> Which is not to say that mashup careers are the only way to go. There's plenty of scope for creativity along existing career paths. Within the trajectory of a typical research scientist, in as much as such a species could even be said to exist, it's possible to produce incredibly original paradigm-shifting work. We have some inspiring cases sitting right here. I think we need a certain amount of selfishness, let's call it self-awareness because that sounds nicer, to create a fulfilling career and frankly a fulfilling life. We need to embrace our own passions, understand our own needs, and make the choices that are right for us. And then, when it comes to doing that work, to living that life, we can let go of our little selves. We creative types are especially prone to paralysis by perfectionism, and it's easier to shake off when we stop thinking about ourselves. Instead of worrying this paper or composition or installation or what have you reflects on me, is it my best work? What will people think about me? We can, instead, think of the people who enjoy our work, learn from it, benefit from it, build on it. We can think of the collaborators who are glad of our contribution. Think of our family if we're supporting one. Any kind of work can be performed selflessly, whether it's building infrastructure in underserved communities or designing video games. I find that whenever I think of my work as service, it eases stress and opens the way for joy. So I guess that's my big life lesson for now, to be self-aware in choosing your work than selfless in carrying it out. For example, I was nervous about giving this speech before I remembered that it isn't about me. Half of you have forgotten my name already, and the other half will forget it over lunch, and that's great. Today is about you. I wish I had time to get to know each one of you, to learn about the wonders you've already accomplished and the ones you dream of pulling off. The best gifts that I received from CCS were my fellow students many of whom are still my dearest friends. It was a community unlike any other, and I can see that's still true. All of you, and indeed all of us, are still like diseamid worms. No one knows our entire life cycle. And just like diseamid worms, most people will never even know we exist. 
so we can get out there and do just about anything. I want to know where I can get a hat. <laughs> On the internet. <laughs> I now have the pleasure of presenting two students who have been chosen to speak for the College of Creative Studies class of 2018. Our first student speaker is Rachel Liu. Rachel will be graduating with a BA in biology. She tells us she's fond of microorganisms and has studied them in mosquitoes, birds, and in the ocean. While not in class or lab, you can find her dancing, sailing, or climbing aerial silks. Rachel is unsure of where the winds will take her next year, but she tells us that for the time being, she's likely going to be filling a Tupperware with cookies at the reception. <laughs> Rachel. I'm happy to say that after four years of a college education, I am just slightly less clueless than I was four years ago. I remember showing up at Pendola House, the CCS dorm in Manzanita Village. Suitcase in hand, I was ready to lose the parents in tow, sorry, mom and dad, um, and launch myself into a new life. There were so many unknowns. Would I get along with my roommates? Did I still remember how to ride a bike? Would I sink or swim in my classes, or the ocean for that matter? Could I be an adult? If you had asked me, I wouldn't have been able to tell you what I would be eating for dinner that night, let alone what I would end up doing in the next few years. I had yet to fall in love with this beautiful coastline. I had yet to watch blood moons, super moons, and even super blue blood moons on the bluffs. And I had yet to befriend the eclectic and brilliant people that are the heart of CCS. The last four years have been an exploration of the unknown. I know that in my time here, I've done a lot of things that have surprised me and have even scared the kittens out of me. Like being submerged 1,027 meters deep in the ocean. I was with my lab aboard the RV Atlantis, a fully equipped research vessel that carries a submersible, the HOV Alvin. This was no princess cruise. As I, was, as I was a wee freshman, I did not expect to go in Alvin, but I found myself sitting in the passenger seat of the sub, staring up as the crew, as the crew closed the hatch. Ah, to be trapped in a six foot diameter titanium sphere for several hours. I may or may not have questioned my life choices leading up to this moment, but there was no going back. My doubts faded as we descended, and I watched the light filter away so that the water changed from a transparent blue to an impenetrable black. My face was smashed up against a tiny porthole window as I watched invertebrates bioluminesce, lighting up the darkness like stars in the night sky. When we got to the bottom with 100 atmospheres of crushing pressure overhead, there was oil seeping out of cracks and crevices in the sea floor, weird growths of microbes, and an albino creature scattered here or there, like something out of a sci-fi space movie. These strange and beautiful spectacles filled me entirely with awe and wonder. And I think that everyone on the stage has a story or two or three like this where your curiosity lights on fire and you become so transfixed by something that the rest of the world manages to fall away. In CCS, there are artists who pour their souls into the stitches of a book. There are physicists working tirelessly to model phenomena in the universe, and there are mathematicians that play games of theory with knots or not. Our passion is evident, but our work here has not been without challenges. Learning how to learn and how to take criticism is not easy. We've all hit rough patches and doubted ourselves at some point. But from these places of discomfort, we have grown and matured. I am so grateful to have gone on this college journey with my peers and colleagues. 
you astound me constantly. CCS is the College of Creative Studies, sure, but it's also the College of Curious Scholars, conspiring clever students. It's a community of coffee sippers. You have collaborative, crafty, and stubborn, and constant candor and sass. My life has been the better for knowing you for those late night chats in the reading room where we can talk about anything and everything. And I mean everything. From our research to topics like evolution and game theory to more personal things like the quality of our poop or finding gray hairs. <laughs> Thank you for these conversations that have made me laugh, sometimes to the point of tears. You have been there through my highest highs and lowest lows at UCSB, and I have been overwhelmed by your intellectual energy and dedication and compassion. As our time here at CCS draws to a close, I hope you feel the tug of a new adventure. Whatever your next steps, I hope that you will have caring mentors along the way and good company to navigate the treacherous and confusing parts, to challenge each other, and to share in both success and failure. I hope that you will imagine yourselves in the most impossible places and dare to go there. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be your colleague. Stay hungry and stay feisty. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Our second speaker is Demetrius Lloyd. Demetrius will be graduating with a BS in chemistry and biochemistry. He has always been fascinated with the physical and social constraints of the material world. He's co-authored two publications with Professor Ram Sashadri of the Materials Research Laboratory, and he recently finished planting a rose garden with a team at St. Michael's University Church. Holding the belief that work is to be done, not seen, Demetrius uses his sense of humor and incredible determination to achieve his goals. He'll be spending a gap year working in Florida before applying for his doctorate at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Demetrius? Man, I'm hurting. I miss these people already. <laughs> but uh, friends, families, esteemed faculty and staff, on behalf of my graduating class, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your dedication and support. Now someone, possibly Kathy, <laughs> reminded me that when asked to speak for a group, you shouldn't feel that you were carrying the weight, because then the challenge is that you're speaking for everyone. And who am I to speak for everybody? I'm an anomaly, black, low socioeconomic status, got a genetic disposition to mental and physical disabilities. I'm aware that statistically speaking, I shouldn't be here, but I am, so I'd like to share how. When I was young, my father gave me three very important pieces of advice. One, you're not special. Two, you may think the world owes you something. It does not. And third and finally, no one is coming to save you. And though he's no longer with us, I give thanks. My father knew that being different was going to be tough, that I needed grit from day one. See, throughout college, particularly this one, and beyond, there are times when you need to be tough. Deadlines don't care how tired you are. Few employers care about your family. And all in all, the work never stops. We've all heard that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. I bring up this cliche to remind you of its meaning, that we must address our weaknesses as individuals if we wish to maintain the collective. If life isn't going to get easier, then you have to get stronger. And I know grit is not always enough. No one succeeds alone. I have to admit that chemistry is my gift, but people are my passion. The College of Creative Studies provides students, real people, 
who not only recognize our academic duty, but also acknowledge our human frailty. We've all hit a wall that no amount of independent effort can overcome. But these are the times you must find your select few to carry you until you can return to stand on your own. Now something most of us have heard is find a way to do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. I feel like we've heard it a lot. And that is a wonderful lie. <laughs> but the truth is, you have to first find a way to love what you do. And I guarantee that you'll never stop working at it. At this college, we put in unnecessary amounts of work into our craft. And for all of our successes, publications, I guarantee you that there are countless untold failures. But we choose to persevere, and we choose to carry on in spite of all of those failures. And it's in that community of love that we all stand stronger together. But you know, some family members may be thinking, that's nice, you all made friends, but what can you do? What are your skills? I imagine a lot of you paid for this. <laughs> so I would like to guarantee that yes, we actually received an education. Every STEM graduate I met has done extensive research during their undergraduate career. I once met a CCS literature major reading excerpts from a book she'd already published. I published this many. Uh, professors probably have more. Our art graduates are consistently challenged to contribute and host their own exhibits. And the senior recitals of our music composition graduates speak for themselves. You're in luck, as I hear they'll be playing. All these experiences, experiences you get at the College of Creative Studies, have imbued us with true lessons to supplement all those memorized facts that come with the major. We gave our hearts and our souls into becoming not only better scholars, but better people. And we've emerged victorious in both of these endeavors. However, I challenge my graduating class and everyone listening to never stop working on yourself. Rest is crucial, but laziness is detrimental. Times of transition can hinder willpower, and it can become tempting to stagnate. So I'd like to remind everyone that you are going to make huge mistakes, quite often. So don't be too hard on yourself. When you do eventually meet those dark days ahead, start slow, light yourself a match. When inevitably you have to find a needle in a haystack, start slow, but get a magnet, make it easy on yourself. <laughs> And when life's knocks you down for the seventh time, and you don't want to get up anymore, don't hop back up, but you know, steady yourself, and you get up an eighth. Now on a final note, I'd just like to say that I am a realist. Anyone who knows me can tell you how familiar I am with extensive loss. I'm aware there are times life is just terrible, and there's nothing you can do about it. Inequity exists. Everyone has different levels of support, resources, and differing intellectual capacities. And it can become an emotionally draining hindrance. But to that, I say, don't let it stop you. Adaptability is one of the most important skills of all. Knowing when to be humble, when to listen, and when to lead. And your life is your own. Always remember that. I won't stand up here and tell you that you can do anything, but I will say that nothing is stopping you from trying. So on a true final note, <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone again, because this event is much larger than myself. I give thanks to our tremendous faculty and staff for assisting and inspiring students like me every day. I give thanks to everyone in our class for all the times you've supported a fellow classmate in need, because all those little times help. And I give thanks to all of our supportive families. Every, inter every interaction leads one down a different path, which is why I'm so grateful that our paths have led here together. So congratulations, class of 2018. Take care.
Thank you both Rachel and Demetrius. Uh, we will be having a musical performance and so we'll ask our dignitaries to exit the stage and we'll be setting up for the, uh, for the performance. I note that a full recording of this commencement is being made and the preceding addresses will be available online if you wish to revisit them. It's a tradition in the College of Creative Studies commencement ceremony to feature work by graduating seniors in music composition. And this year, we have two CCS music composition students who have composed pieces for the musical portion of our ceremony. The first is A Trance and a Dance for ocarina and piano, composed by Tristan Perez. Of it, the composer says, when I first joined CCS, one of my goals was to write something for the ocarina. After years of procrastination, I finally did it. For performed by Tristan Perez on ocarina and Jared Fidel on piano, please welcome our composers.
Thank you, Tristan and Jared. Our second and final pieces are entitled Hummingbird and Bird of Paradise. Both are composed by Miranda Lane. The first piece, Hummingbird, depicts the daily cycle of hummingbirds as they zip around during the day and rest at night. The piece is divided between a fast 6-8 segment and a slow 4-4 segment, corresponding to the day and night habits of hummingbirds. The second and final piece, Bird of Paradise, is based on the displays of colorful birds of paradise. The piece is very rhythmic and dance-like with showy flute motives. Performed by Sylvia Tran on flute and piccolo, Danning Liu on violin, Will Brewer on cello, and Jared Fidel again on piano.
Miranda, would you please stand? Let's thank our composer. Thank you to Sylvie, Danning, Will, Jared, and Miranda. I, I want to invite everyone to actually see the voices of some of our other students. The Literary Journal Spectrum is available in the lobby. You can take a look at that. And if you happen to be over in the college, the Senior Art Show is hung in the art gallery. Many of you were there yesterday. And that represents pieces of art by each of our graduating seniors in the art program. As we're getting set up on the stage here, it's now my privilege to introduce the undergraduate awards. We have a series of awards here in CCS. And we'll get everything all set and get everyone back up here. Meanwhile, you can stretch. Right? How are the students holding up? Yeah? Woo! All right. OK. So I'll begin by asking Chancellor Yang to return to present the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Research. Chancellor Yang. Uh, it is my pleasure to present the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Research to Colin Kim. Colin, let's just stand up. Uh, you want to stay here? Okay, right here? Colin graduates today with a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry and Biochemistry. Colin has demonstrated his passion for biomedical and synthetic biology research since his first year at UC Santa Barbara. He has conducted research in Professor Irene Chen's lab, where he investigated the bacterial offage and bacterial host interactions. During his time here, Colin received an URCA grant, Undergraduate Research and Creative Activities Grant, and he received funding from the National Institute of Health as a MARC scholar. He was also an MGen scholar in Dr. Christina uh, Smokey's lab at Stanford University. He was a class tutor for organic and uh, general chemistry and was heavily involved in the Christian campus organization called Epic Movement. He is fascinated by God's creations, which is the biggest driving force in his passion for biomedical research. Colin's faculty mentor describes him as good-natured, kind, and humble, and appraised his intellectual ability, enthusiasm, curiosity, and creativity. One professor noted, Colin seems to be the kind of person who will achieve whatever goal he sets. So Colin will pursue a PhD in biological engineering at MIT starting this fall. Please join me in congratulating Colin Kim. <laughs> I'm now happy to announce the 11th Annual College of Creative Studies Faculty Executive Committee Commendation for Excellence Award. This honor is awarded to an exceptional student or students in order to recognize their truly outstanding performance in their overall intellectual and creative endeavors. A graduating senior in CCS must be nominated by two or more CCS faculty and agreed upon by the members of the CCS Faculty Executive Committee. This year, we will be recognizing three students, and it gives me great pleasure to convey this year's awards. Students, please come forward as I read your name. Our first awardee is Chloe Avery, CCS Mathematics. <laughs> Chloe? In each of their letters about Chloe, the nominating faculty agree that Chloe is ambitious and remarkable. 
What her faculty advisor notes in collating the materials, however, is that her accomplishment of becoming proficient and obtaining original results in three distinct areas of mathematics is simply astonishing. Chloe has conducted research every summer since being at UCSB and participated in two separate REU programs over the past two summers. When not researching, she has coordinated outreach events for women in mathematics and was the founder and president of UCSB's student chapter of the Association for Women in Mathematics. One faculty member summarizes, Chloe displays important qualities which forecast her potential for success in mathematics, a broad mathematical preparation, an abundance of mathematical talent, a willingness to actively participate in the mathematical community, and an eagerness for mathematical challenges. Chloe will be tackling new challenges as a PhD student at the University of Chicago this fall. Congratulations, Chloe. Our next recipient is Christina Garcia, CCS Physics. <laughs> Mature, organized, intellectually driven. This is how the faculty describe Christina. Christina's research advisor noted that she is one of the best undergraduate students whom he's had the pleasure of interacting with in his 15 plus years at UCSB. Christina began research in the materials department in the second quarter of her freshman year, early even for CCS physics students, and has gone on to be co-author on one published paper and is now close to completing a second publication as lead author. She secured international internships for the past two summers, traveling first to Dublin for research and most recently to Tokyo, where she also participated in outreach to high school students. Christina is clearly stellar and has a very bright future ahead of her. This fall, Christina will be heading to Harvard University where she will be pursuing a PhD in physics. Congratulations, Christina. Our third awardee is Marvin Chi, CCS Physics. Marvin, will you please come to the podium? <laughs> Marvin's faculty advisor writes that he's never, she's never seen Marvin perform anything but effortlessly, and his work is always exemplary. Another faculty member writes that Marvin is one of the strongest undergraduates he's seen in 37 years of teaching at Princeton, Duke, and UCSB. When taking a graduate level course as a third year undergraduate that's typically taken in the second or third year of graduate school, Marvin was a regular attendee at office hours not to ask for help with assignments, but rather to discuss further implications of the course material. This graduate course led to an independent study reading course in which Marvin absorbed massive amounts of both theoretical physics and abstract mathematics. He's presented his research at the Worcester Symposium, collaborated on a paper with a faculty member to which he contributed substantially, and is wrapping up a student-led colloquium on a topic that many physics students take, not teach, as a second-year graduate student. Marvin is a budding scholar and will be attending the University of Colorado Boulder to pursue a PhD in physics this fall. Congratulations to Marvin. Now I would like to reintroduce Chancellor Yang and ask him to come to the podium. And now, the moment we are waiting for the presentation of degrees. The degrees conferred by the University of California attest to scholastic achievement and thus represent the university's fulfillment of its primary responsibility. In the College of Creative Studies, we award the Bachelor of Arts or the Bachelor of Science degrees. Will the candidates for the degrees please rise?
by virtue of the authority vested in me by the regents of the University of California, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science as appropriate. Will each of the candidates please come forward by rows when Dean Foltz calls your name? Please be seated. We now continue with the tradition in CCS of recognizing each of our graduates. First, we wish to honor the memory of Nikola Kapamadzin. Nikola was a, a student in mathematics in CCS. These are some of the words that students have given to us to honor Nikola's memory, and we're very happy that his family is with us here today. Chess player, generous heart, proud Serbian you're missed. And we do have gifts for the family and uh, any of our math students who wish to remain afterwards, we very much appreciate that. Thank you for being here today. We dearly miss Nicola. Now we wish to recognize each of our graduates. And if you would come forward by rows, each of them has prepared a small card and we'll read something that they would like to share with the audience. Traki Huang, BS in Chemistry and Biochemistry, will be pursuing a PhD at Cornell University in Chemistry, was a Regents Scholar, and received distinction in the major from LNS Chemistry. <laughs> Chloe Isabella Avery, BS Mathematics, will be pursuing a PhD in Mathematics at the University of Chicago, received an NSF Graduate Research Fellowship. Alexandria Cynthia Barajas, BS, BS in Chemistry Biochemistry, will work in industry while taking a gap year before graduate school, Mark Scholar, and published in the Journal of Controlled Release. Congratulations. <laughs> will Hawkins, BS in Computer Science, will be pursuing a Master of Information and Data Science degree at, the, at UC Berkeley and working full time as, a, as an Associate Data Scientist at Eventbrite. Received the Harold Frank Entrepreneurial Scholarship Award and the Glenn Kohler Scholarship Award. <laughs> Carrie Elizabeth Jones, BS Chemistry Biochemistry, will be pursuing a PhD at UC Berkeley for Organic Chemistry. Received the Roach Bioscience Undergraduate Excellence Award and an Edison McNair Summer Research Fellowship. Abe Karplus, BS in Computer Science, will be pursuing the combined BSMS at UCSB in Computer Science. Abe. <laughs> Aliyah Haesung Law, BS in Chemistry and Biochemistry, will be pursuing a PhD in Food Chemistry at The Ohio State University, has a publication in Food Hydrocolloids, and presented at the Institute of Food Technologists Annual Conference, which is a professional society. Aaliyah? This guy. Demetrius Lloyd, BS in Chemistry, Biochemistry, a minor in Applied Psychology, will be traveling to Thailand before heading to Florida to enjoy a simple life of prayer and meditation. Published in the Journal of Applied Physics and Journal of Physics, Condensed Matter, Demetrius writes on his card, he crushed it. He plans on continuing to crush it. <laughs> Christian Viendra Rendon Sharma, BA in Biology. Austin Bentley Tizer, BS in Computer Science, will continue work as a software engineer for Photothermal Spectroscopy Corp. Is currently in the process of developing a sequel to his mobile app game with over 380,000 downloads. <laughs> Nicholas Matthew Vaughn, BS in Computer Science, going straight to work at Yardi. <laughs> Christina Isabella Antonina, 
2017 Melbourne R. Carker Student Research Awards in Malacology and a two-time recipient of the Nature Journal Scholarship. Congratulations. <laughs> Darren James Asaro, BS Computing, hopes to work at Sonos and then start his own digital audio startup, Region Scholar. Seth Bartman, BS in Physics. Seth, congratulations. <laughs> Michael Belleville, BS in Chemistry, Biochemistry with a minor in Philosophy. <laughs> Tamara Gomez Bolivar, BS in Mathematics, going back home to San Diego to do, no, to do who knows what. <laughs> Graham Austin Bunce, BA in Music Composition, plans on continuing his education in multimedia composition, exploring the field of sound design and writing a ton of music in the meantime. <laughs> Richard David Carini, BS in Mathematics with a minor in Physics and Statistical Science. Tiffany Hiroko Cedeno, BA in Biology, minor in Chemistry, will be pursuing a Master's in Marine Science through the IGPMS program here at UCSB. Congratulations. James Hong Chow, BS in Physics, will be pursuing a PhD in Physics at Yale University. Can't let him get away. Trevor Elijah Cohn, BS in Chemistry, Biochemistry, will be attending graduate school at UCSB this fall. Woo. Can't get rid of <laughs> Natalie Rose Colburn, BA in Biology, will be pursuing graduate school after a gap year and received a Worcester Award in 2016. Phoebe Ann Coy, BS in Mathematics, will be completing a summer internship at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency before attending graduate school, completed an REU at San Diego State University. <laughs> Calvin Davison, BA in Biology, will be pursuing graduate school after taking a gap year, 2017 Worcester Award recipient. Mayor Feldman, BS in Physics, will be pursuing a PhD in Physics at Princeton University. Club Rowing National Champion in 2017, First Team Rowing All-American. <laughs> Megan Kristen Franke, BS in Mathematics, will be pursuing a PhD in Computational Biology and Bioinformatics at USC this fall. Christina Garcia, BS Physics, will be pursuing a PhD in Applied Physics at Harvard University, 2016 Goldwater Scholar and 2018 NSF Graduate Research Fellow. <laughs> Nicholas Stanley Geis, BS in Mathematics, will be pursuing a PhD in Mathematics at Ohio State University, aims to complete his PhD and hopefully help start a special program for undergraduates like CCS. <laughs> Michelle Anna Gertzwolf, BA in Biology, will be continuing her research as a lab tech this fall while preparing for graduate school in 2019, was acknowledged in Karina Logan's Grackle Intelligence Papers. That's awesome. Aiden Hamilton Dirk Herdeshi, BS Physics, PhD, will be pursuing a PhD at the University of Michigan this fall. Congratulations. <laughs> Koei Inlo, BA Biology, will be pursuing a PhD in Biophysics at Brandeis University, was also the recipient of a Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship. Tynan Fox Kennedy, BS in Physics, will be pursuing a PhD at UC San Diego this fall. <laughs> Colin Kim, BS Chemistry Biochemistry, will be pursuing a PhD in Biological Engineering at MIT, 
Colin was a 2016 NIH Mark Scholar, 2017 Amgen Scholar at Stanford, and he writes on his card, my dream is to become a professor at UCSB and directly give back to the students in CCS. Niraj Kulkarni, BS Physics, will be pursuing a PhD at the University of Colorado Boulder. Yeah. <laughs> Miranda Delight Lane, BS, or, I'm sorry, BA in Music Composition and a BS in Computing, and our wonderful composer. Thank you. <laughs> Connor Lemp, BA Mathematics, going straight to work in game development. Benson Lee, BS Physics, planning to get a job as a machine learning scientist, undergo machine, more machine learning study as an open AI machine learning fellow, completed the Los Alamos computational physics program during the summer of his sophomore year, and received the Eureka and Jean Lucas fellowships. Benson. <laughs> Rachel Liu, BA Biology, she didn't put anything on her card, but you know she's pretty special. <laughs> Christopher Norvang Madsen, BS Physics, will be pursuing a PhD in physics at UC Berkeley. <laughs> Philip Tyler Masterson, BS in physics, BS in computing, attending graduate school at UCSB, conducting research in high energy experimental something that didn't record. I plan to contribute to data analysis and the design of upgrades for the LHC and considering a long-term position at the CERN as a career goal. Congratulations. Okay. Sierra McLynn, BA Biology, will be working as research coordinator, coordinator at the Crocodile Research Coalition in Belize. Awesome. Avik Mondal, BS Physics, will be attending the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor this fall for graduate school and was a staff member for the UCSB Adventure Programs. Congratulations. <laughs> Linnea Crystal Palmstrom, BA in Biology, minor in Earth Science Spatial Studies, taking a gap year working in abalone aquaculture, participated in UCSB Undergraduate Research Colloquium and presented research on the island scrub jay vocalizations. Tristan Dario Perez, BA Music Composition, led a student orchestra and wind ensemble for his composition recital, received UCSB Alumni Scholarship, and will continue working at UCSB Conference and Hospitality Services while beginning to self-publish his work and then move to Colorado to try something new. Tristan. <laughs> Ashley Pillay, BA in Art, Book Arts, Studio intern at the Women's Studio Workshop in Rosedale, New York, Gail Burkus Penlin Award in 2016, Faculty Award of Distinction, and Art Department Honors Program. Congratulations. <laughs> Marvin Chi, BS Physics, pursuing a PhD in Physics at the University of Colorado Boulder. Marvin. Xiao Yu Chao, BS Mathematics, will be enrolling in an MSc program in Applied Mathematics and Statistics at Johns Hopkins University, worked as a research assistant for, for Professor Katie Craig at UCSB Math Department throughout her undergrad career. Benjamin Rauda, BS Computer Science, will be working at Green Hills Software. Niati Rodericks, BA Biology, received an NSF REU Fellowship. <laughs> Emmett Andrew Sams, BS Physics, will attend UCSB in the fall for the Teacher Education Program and plans to teach high school physics. Thomas Gregory Schibler, BS Computer Science, will be pursuing an MS at UCSB, then planning to work at NASA's JPL, still considering a PhD in the future. 
published in ESA in 2017 and was accepted to the UCSB PhD with a Chancellor's Fellowship, continuing to work with Professor Surrey, but taking some time before committing. Congratulations. <laughs> Kai Shanlin Schwinicki, BS in Chemistry Biochemistry, will be attending UC San Diego this fall for graduate school. Shelby Lynn Shankles, BS in Chemistry Biochemistry, will be pursuing graduate school after taking a year off to be a math teacher in Thailand. She was a Mark Goldwater scholar, and she says, if anyone knows how to speak Thai, please help. <laughs> Benjamin Ezra Spitz, BS Mathematics, will be pursuing a PhD in math at UCLA. Talon Edward Peter Stark, BS Mathematics, will be pursuing a PhD in math at UCLA, and he's honored to have been working with Christian Martinez on stability conditions and moduli spaces of sheaves. <laughs> Vivian Sun, BS in Chemistry Biochemistry, uh, was a student abroad in Japan last summer and taking a gap year to prepare for graduate school. Andy Tabaras, BA in Art and Painting. <laughs> Ted Tinker, BS Mathematics, first mathematician to win CCS's Most Excellent Prose Award. All right. Preston Stewart Towers, BA Music Composition, is going to take a year off to experiment musically outside of an institution. Received the Dorothy and Cheryl Corwin Award for Excellence in Music Composition, second place at the Electronic Electronic Acoustic Composition in 2017-18. Preston. <laughs> Sergey Vasilia, BS in Physics, published twice in Nature in 2017 for his research in astrophysics. Pretty good. <laughs> Sasha Volick, BS Computer Science, continuing to work with the UCSB Security Lab over the summer. <laughs> Michelle Wagner, BS in Chemistry and Biochemistry. Michelle indicates that she's gonna relax. I think that's an excellent point. Katrina Elise Wilson, BS in Chemistry and Biochemistry, will be attending graduate school at Ohio State University for Materials Science and Engineering. Congratulations. Angela Shu, BA in Biology with a minor in Statistical Science, received a Metrome Fellowship and going to work as a research assistant at the Plant Biology Department in the Carnegie Institute of Sciences. Brady Youngquist, BA in Biology. Congratulations, Brady. <laughs> Leila Bahie Youssef, Youssefi, BA in Art and Painting, and a BA in Environmental Studies. I hope to make murals and paintings around the world before beginning a studio practice in a quaint home in the hills of Camelot. Erka Grant and Dole Award recipient. Congratulations. <laughs> Mayu, BS in Mathematics, minor in Statistics, will be attending graduate school in the fall at Stanford University. Abhishek Bhattacharya, BS in Computer Science, BA in Biology, founder of Skin IQ, a medical diagnostics company, and the one, won the best student paper at the American Medical Informatics Association, has published a paper in Machine Learning, and aspires to be a physician scientist in the future. <laughs> Benjamin Daniel Cortez Hurst, BA in Art, Book Arts. <laughs> Rory Robert McLish, BS in Chemistry and Biochemistry. <laughs> Thank you. 
Xander Song, BS in Mathematics. Xander, <laughs> William Lawrence Berman, BS in Computer Science, going to work at Opus Logica in Santa Barbara, was a Regent Scholar in the Engineering Honors Program. <laughs> Charles Henry Vincent Lewis II, BS in Computing. Jonathan Patrick Snyder, BA in Biology, attending graduate school after taking a gap year. Congratulations. Helena Christine Steffens, BS in Chemistry Biochemistry, plans on continuing research work she's starting over the summer at the NIH with the hope of getting a post back position there before applying to grad school. Congratulations. Stephanie Rose Taylor, BS in Chemistry Biochemistry, recipient of both a surf and a turf. Okay. Kelton James Hemingway, BA in Music Composition, will be attending flight school in San Diego. And last but not least, we have a very special graduate with us today. I would like to introduce John Ritt, who's earning his BA in art and painting, which he actually earned in the late 80s in the College of Creative Studies. John went on to an outstanding career in design. He still has his own design company. And he notes that he was clever enough to postpone walking across this stage for 29 years. While he was here at UCSB in the 80s, he was captain of the UCSB surf team. And now he's married to a brilliant and beautiful woman who gave him two beautiful and brilliant girls. His wife is here in the audience. John created our new logo for the College of Creative Studies, which you can see down here in the front um, if you have a chance. It's absolutely wonderful, and it was a special gift to the college, and we really appreciate it. And John has also created a very special certificate for every single graduate on the stage here. This is a, a commemorative certificate, not only for the 50th year of the College of Creative Studies, but for years to come as well. And I'd really like to just thank John and welcome him back to UCSB. And congratulations, you finally did it. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations to you all again. You are all invited to a reception outside the Campbell Hall in front of the yard there. Thank you again. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.